Oh, I'm playing Davo. Davo beat me yesterday. I had a really sad game against Davo yesterday. So here we go again. Um, conflicted while opening. Let's play Knight C6. Let's mix up the opening. Playing something that I almost never play. This is a Nimzovich defense. And I'm going to play D6. I think the more popular move is D5. So this is a pretty obscure variation. And there's one point. If D5, I play Knight B8. And then later C6 and try and um, poke and prod at White's overextended pawn. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. It's a very modern setup, using the minor pieces to control the center rather than my center pawns. Bishop e3. I'm not sure if my opponent's prepared or just kind of playing quickly, playing natural moves. Um, I mean, f6 looks playable. e5 looks very thematic. E5 takes, takes. I don't see anything wrong with E5, actually. Takes, takes, D5, Knight, D4, Bishop, B5. Yeah, because the Knight's pinned, so it's not actually helping influence the center so much. And whenever I want, I can take it. So I am threatening to take and then take. So the main line I was just calculating is takes, takes, d5. And then I'm thinking knight d4, where the knight's supported by the pawn bishop battery. Usually pawns aren't involved in, with batteries, but sometimes when the bishop's aligned with a the pawn, then the square on the diagonal can be used. Um, interesting. So white's leaving the tension. Gives me the option of taking. And then there's a messy line. Takes, 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 rook b8. That's okay for black. And if takes, takes, 95. I like the, like the, the prospect of this. And there's bishop b5. Okay, we're going into this. At bishop b5, I'll have to figure out what to do. Maybe king f8, maybe bishop d7. Not happening. So bishop e2. If I take the knight... It's nice having the e5 square. I'm not sure how long it'll last for. Considering queen e7 here. Just reinforcing everything. And this knight wants to develop too. There's also like taking. Bishop f3. Like just to start with. Let's start by taking. I'm not seeing too many scenarios where um, the bishop stays. Now a question, knight in knight f6 or knight e7? Knight in e7 is so restricted. Knight f6 allows bishop e5, but I think that's okay. This doesn't seem like white wants to trade off this bishop. Like, this is a better bishop. Now I can play knight d7. So even though white has a bishop pair, I have a really strong grip on the e5 square. Um, casting coming. Whoa, it's Mr. Gold is off at 2 a.m. Actually, I read that name wrong. Mr. Gold is off 2 a.m. <laughs> well, thanks for gifting 10 subs. I really appreciate that. Yeah, sometimes during these more serious rapid games, I, I don't look too much at chat. Sometimes, like, if there's a longer thing for my opponent, I'll go back and see if there were questions earlier. There was one comment about queen h4, which um, I did consider. 
but usually it's just mapped with g3 or bishop g3. Okay, let's castle. Idea rook e8. Or maybe the idea is um, like to get the other rook to e8 as well. I mean, the e file is uh, only half open file for black, only file without a black pawn. Um, Queen h4 still comes to mind, but I mean, the pawn's defended. So I think I'd rather improve. Considering h6, king h7, because queen d2 might be coming. Yeah, queen d2 is coming. I really shouldn't spend too long here. Just trying to get a sense of. After queen d2, where, would, where do I want my pieces? It would maybe be nice to have a pawn on c5, but I don't want to play c5 and allow takes. I think I'll start with a6, trying to be flexible, preparing b5. Um, yeah, b5, why not? Because the c4 square could be a potential spot for the knight. Probably don't want to go there too soon. But maybe something like knight b6, knight c4. And yeah, I really don't mind if takes takes. Again, that would be a probably a positional mistake for white. And there's real ideas of knight c4. And I thought b3 would be a little bit weakening, but that's probably okay. Now what to do with my the rest of my pieces? I think the knight should just reroute. Like, yeah, it wasn't doing anything on b6 after b3. And maybe it can find a new home on c5. That's a move. I want to play this, but then bishop g5 traps a queen. So I have to be somewhat awake, somewhat careful. And queen e7. Like long term, maybe like eventually play f5. But I think this position takes a lot of patience. Okay, so we got two knights against bishop and knight. This bishop is a very passive piece. Time-wise, I'm not doing that great. Down about two minutes. In some moments, I've been overthinking. But based on the position, it looks very comfortable. This e4 pawn is backwards. Basically means it can't move forward, and it can't be defended by a pawn. And it's on the half-open file. So we might see queen d4 or that move. Uh, let's start with this. 93 may be coming. Now queen h4. Just applying pressure. Got two attackers now. Maybe soon to be a third attacker. Knight d7 will unleash the rook. Um, do I want to play f6? I think I do. Just ensuring that the knight's not pinned. Looks a little bit weakening. Like long term, white is maybe dreaming about knight e6, but I'm very far away from that. I'm not sure what my next move is. Like the pieces are almost at their optimal squares. And maybe I can double up, like, yeah, double up the rooks. If ever b4, I just retreat. I mean, b4, queen h7 is an idea. Which maybe I have to take seriously. Because one of these pawns could be falling. But not yet. Yeah, thank goodness for this g-pawn. If not for this g-pawn, I'd be getting triple forked.
Time is leveling. Both below five minutes. Realizing this pawn is pinned to the queen. F5 is probably too risky, but maybe I should have considered F5. The idea of F4. Actually, I really should have considered F5, like the more I'm looking at it. But too late now. I could throw in taking. A B4 is a good move. Yeah, I think I'm losing the pawn. It's interesting, though, because the queen gets a little bit sidelined. There's also an idea here, like, if takes... I was going to say the rook can't take because e1 would hang. Okay, probably knight b6 here. Preventing queen a7 and targeting c4. A potential outpost square. The other day, I was playing a game, and I like casually mentioned the word outpost. I think there were a few people in chat that were asking, like, what is an outpost? Um, yeah, for any experienced chess player, it's like one of the first chess terms that you'll learn. But yeah, it's usually a square that's defended by a pawn and occupied by a knight that can't be attacked by the opponent pawn. So in this case, these pawns have both extended beyond c4. So if I get the knight to c4, there's never d3 or b3 to kick it away. I guess an outpost is like almost always within the opponent's territory too, territory too. Except this is also an outpost on e5. Okay, rook f2. I mean, I could play this for safety. Maybe I should. I'm still thinking about f4 though. I don't think I can resist. I should say f5. It takes. It looks so counterintuitive because like I'm I'm pinning my knight. I'm weakening the whole king side. I mean, white's already doubled up. But the point is the pawn is pinned and I just want to play f4 and like gain space. And even if knight g4, like this knight's so well defended, other knight can come in. And there's also ideas of just winning the pawn, too. Like, take and take. Except, oh, the knight's still pinned. Oh, wait a minute. I miscalculate? I forgot g3. G3 is not played. G3, my original plan was to take and take, but knight f3 would have been illegal. Okay, here I can play f4. Uh, this knight has one square. And now knight c4. Yeah, gradually dominating like all areas of the board. Center's nice. King side is becoming nicer. Bishop B2 is probably coming. Hmm. I'm going to play King G6. So I really don't care about the knight. I mean, if it takes, I take with pawn. I have this move, but then G3. I'll take with pawn first. Wow. It's a fancy move. Very fancy. Knife f5 is coming. I have to be careful. I know this opponent is very resourceful. Take. So if I take and then take on e4? Fascinating line. Also play knight g4. Knight g4, oh, g4 loses a pawn. Let's play this. Thank you, Inkblot. 
Distraction. Oh, also, no thank you, Ingvaz. <laughs> Distractions are not welcome at this time. Okay, I'm just going to sack. This is a practical decision. The knight is still strong. Attack is rolling. Knight g4 is a threat. I basically only watch YouTube, but I sub here oh, with cool. Prime because it's literally the least I can do. I really appreciate that. Also really appreciate this move. So G3 I take. <clears throat> and looks like I'm winning. Am I winning back material? Maybe not. It's really close though. Wow. Yeah, opponent has to calculate. G3 I'll pre-move. Okay, this should be winning. Oh, the end game is not. It's actually really crazy. I can't trade into the king pawn ending. Or can I? Maybe it's playable, but this is simpler. Because takes takes, blight would make a pass pawn. Oh, I could have taken. No, I didn't have c6. Okay. This should be winning now. So I won back the exchange, and I'm up two pawns, soon to be three pawns. Just have to watch out for the breakthrough. Uh, let's take here first. And this move. Mm, that's a move. I'm up four pawns. It should be more than enough. Even though this pawn is reaching the seventh rank. Or the fact I'm losing this pawn. Yeah, I'm not going to mess up the end game like I did yesterday. <laughs> uh, good game. Um, yeah, there is a, a really crazy line if you turn off the engine here. I don't want engine assistance just yet, but um, if white took with pawn, I wasn't sure what's happening. Because these squares are both covered. I was going to play queen g3. I was trying to calculate this, this position because white has a move rook g2. And then, yeah, I didn't know what was happening. I could take on f1. There's no knight e3. Ah, uh, maybe I have this. Yeah, this is probably good enough. And then, like, takes. Let's see. Engine. So, rook g2, rook f1, king f1. Queen d5. Black's not winning. But black still probably has good chances. People are saying maiden 1 was missed. Where? I made two blunders this game. Yeah, maiden one was, was not missed, as far as I can see. It was queen h2. I mean, I was threatening maiden one. Uh, here. But g3 defends with a rook. Uh, sometimes that can be overlooked. What to do? Like a good game. 